Hello there. Trust you've had a good week. We're glad to be able to come to you today, share with you in worship and a few words from the uh, Bible. I hope that uh, it will encourage you and uh, let you know that all is well. Uh, we don't have Aspen with us today. She's having some downtime with uh, her mom and dad and baby sister. So it's the three of us. And again, I appreciate Clinton and all that he does. And Susan, she just had a birthday yesterday. How about that? Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> How old are you? 29 again. All righty. <laughs> Susan, enter. Bring us into the throne of God.
into the presence of God, the more things change. As we praise Him, He gives us strength.
Uh, that's where there's life. That's where there's His presence. That's where um, we are strengthened and encouraged. And so um, I'm going to go with it. In the presence of Jehovah.
so important to be sensitive to God. You know, uh, I grew up in an atmosphere I, like there had to be noise. If there wasn't noise, there wasn't God. And a lot of our church services have been noisy, and they have been exactly that noisy. But uh, and I thank God. I thank God for worship. I thank God for praise. There's no one likes to to praise God and, and really, really have an awesome time in His presence and shout and dance and just uh, be a real good holy roller, so to speak. Then there is that time, I'm just entering in to His presence, sitting at His feet and worshiping Him. Bless the Lord. Do you have another song? Thank you, Jesus. Sitting at His feet. Sitting at His feet. That is where my joy is complete. Sitting at His feet. talk to you today about renewing your mind. Folks can easily tell us what our problems are, but many times to find the solution is more difficult. I would like to just talk to you for a few moments on renewing your mind. How do I bring forth a change in my life? How do I begin to experience a change? How do I begin to experience true joy? Colossians, the third chapter in verse 2. I'm going to read though, perhaps verses 1 uh, through 9, and then I might go into the message a little bit. It says here, putting on the new self. Amen? Are you ready for a change? Are you ready for a new you? I know that uh, I, I, I seek the face of God for a change in many, many areas of my life. And I'm sure there is a desire in all of our hearts as we draw near to Christ, as we draw nigh to Him, we know that there are things that we need to experience and bring forth a change. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We're longing for a change. We're longing for a renewal. We're longing to experience God's presence. The scripture says, seek those things which are above. Where is your interest? Where do we spend our time? Do we really long for there to be 
a new creation within you and I. And so we seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse 2 says, set your affection on things above and not on things on this earth. Set your affections on heavenly things and don't let this earth and its attractions allure you away from what God wants to do in your heart and in your life. Ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuous, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which also ye walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now ye also put all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blaspheming, Filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Seek those things which are above, and don't let your interest be down here. Easier said than done. But I tell you, it is so easy. And I know I'm double talking in the presence of God when we allow the Holy Spirit to bring forth a change. Now, this is what the message has to say. So now, if you're serious about living the new resurrection life with Christ, he says, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. I like that. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Colossians, the third chapter, verse 10 says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge and after the image of him that created him. I'm going to uh, share with you here from Luke, the 24th chapter, and verse 13. I, I like this. A lot was going on in this ch chapter. Uh, Christ was just crucified. And there was much disappointment. The folks were very disillusioned. They thought he was the one that was going to bring forth a change. He, they thought he was the one that was going to restore the temple. They thought all of these things was going to happen. And man, were they surprised. Behold, it's, we well know the story that Mary Magdalene, and they went to the tomb, and, and Jesus was not there. And uh, they hurried up and told the disciples, and they were in disbelief. They thought someone stole the body. They really did not know what was going on, because they did not expect this. Anything ever happened in your life you didn't expect? Anything happened in your life that, wow, that uh, came from the left field. I'm going to start with the verse 13. When Jesus joins a couple of fellas on the way to Emmaus. Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score four longs, which is seven miles. They were worn seven miles. And as they talked together of all these things which had happened, it came to pass that while they communicated together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Folks, this is reality today. Uh, we can be in, in a, a difficult place and not knowing that the presence of God is right there with us. We think the total opposite, but God is right beside you. He said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk? And are sad. What's your problem? What are you guys talking about? Why are you so downcast? Why are you so sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering and said unto him, Are you the only stranger here in Jerusalem? Hast thou not known the things that have come to pass these last days? The message says it this way. As Jesus asked, What's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? 
They stood there long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one who hasn't heard what's happened these last few days? And they go on and they say concerning Jesus, and listen to Jesus' comeback. Verse 25 and 26. He said unto them, O fools, kind of harsh, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Art not Christ to have suffered these things and to have entered into his glory? We are talking about experiencing joy. We're talking about not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your minds. And here these guys are sad, downcast, like they lost their best friend. Uh, and Jesus says, what's your problem? What in the world? What? Why are you so, as he says, why are you slow, so slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken? Folks, don't get caught up in the things of this world. Don't let the happenings of our nation get you down. And there's a lot going on. There has always been a crisis going on. And we as Christians need to see it from a heavenly perspective. We need to see things from a heavenly perspective. Do not seek things on this earth, but seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth. May I encourage you to turn your eyes toward Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. I hope something that has been said today, I'm going to continue this because this is burning in my spirit. I might touch on some sensitive matters, and I pray God helps me to uh, speak words of grace and um, to be able to, you to hear my heart. But uh, I want to encourage you. Don't allow the things that are happening in this earth to take away your joy. Don't allow the things that are happening in our nation to take away your joy. Don't allow the things that are happening in your personal life to get you down. But God, God has greater things for us. God has awesome experiences for us. And may I encourage you, put on the new man. Put on Christ as he has brought forth his power and his love in our heart. Until next week. I sure do encourage your feedback. I sure do encourage your comments. I got a comment that really encouraged me. And I thank you. I thank you. Please keep in touch. Any prayer request, anything of concern, please let us know. We want to uh, be able to take your needs before God in prayer and believe God. So until next week, God bless you. And uh, know that you have our love and our prayers. We'll see you then.